What would your life look like today? What would your mind look like today? What would your body look like today if you never gave up on that thing that you gave up on 10 years ago? Your life would be vastly different, but the problem is you gave up on it. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to harness the power of momentum in your life. And I think that momentum is one of the most underrated things. Like I don't hear a whole lot of people talk about momentum in their life or talk about how success is so much momentum and so much of harnessing this feeling of momentum. And I think that it's a big piece of life. I think that's a big piece of success. And that's what we're going to dive into today. And you know, one of the things that I see with a lot of people, I've coached thousands and thousands of people is that most people get really excited to start something and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start this new business. And they get excited and they make like a business plan and they get some samples and they make an idea of what they're going to do and they start doing it and they don't get the results that they want to right away and start to fall off because of it. And then they're like, maybe that was just a sign that this is not the path that I'm supposed to go. Maybe this is just a sign that this is not right for me. And what happens is they give up before they start getting the momentum on their side. They give up before they get the momentum that starts to show them that they're on the right path. And the way that I like to think of it is like pushing a car. If you've ever pushed a car before, like if your car's ever broken down before, I used to have some beaters back in the day and I had a car that would break down. It was an old Nissan Sentra. It was a complete POS and it would break down and I'd have to push it by myself sometimes. And sometimes somebody was nice enough on the side of the road to help me push my car the struggles of being a college kid back in the day for me. That's what, that's what it was. It, it was a side note. It had no air conditioning and I lived in Florida and it was the worst thing to have no air conditioning in Florida, especially when it rained. And then my body heat would heat up the inside of it and it would get all foggy on the inside and I had no way to defrost the windows. So uh, I've, I've had those days before. I remember what those were like. And when you start pushing a car, if you've ever pushed a car, like the physical pushing of a car from no movement at all to getting it to move a little bit is the hardest part of it, where you're pushing it and you're like, I don't even know if I'm strong enough. And it moves a little bit, it moves a little bit, it moves a little bit. The, the starting of a business or the starting of starting to lose weight and going on your, your journey is like coming from no momentum and starting to get it pushing. And I think most people give up before the movement actually starts. They're like, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. I'm gonna give up. Uh, this must mean that I'm not supposed to do this. I'm gonna go to something else. And then they go to something else like, oh, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. I'm gonna give up. But if you've ever pushed the car, it takes a little while for the wheels to start moving. It takes a while for the wheels to start spinning. But what happens is once the car gets going, it gets so much easier. It's so much harder to go from zero to one mile an hour than it is to go from like one to two. And then from two to three becomes easier. And it takes a while to get it moving. But once it gets moving, it becomes so much easier to keep it moving. And now that you get it going and the car is moving, what would be really dumb to do now that the car's moving is to jump in front of it and try to stop it. Because if you have a car going, even if it's just three miles an hour, if it's just moving and it's got some momentum on its side and you hop in front of the car and try to stop it, you're going to get run over by the car. And that's how a lot of people's success really happens is that there's a whole lot of struggle in the beginning. There's resistance. There's figuring it out. They're seeing what works. They're seeing what doesn't work. And it's pushing and pushing. You're like, shit, it's not moving. It doesn't feel like it's moving. At that point in time, you don't give up. You got to keep pushing through and eventually whatever it is you're working on will start to harness. You'll be able to start to harness a little bit of momentum on your side and it becomes easier to get it going. It becomes easier to get going. It becomes easier to get it going. You know, when I look back at my business, the first few years was a struggle. Like it was years. It wasn't like months. It was years to figure out what works, what doesn't work. If I look at the first three years of my business versus the last three years of my business now, there was, it was so much harder the first three years. It's so much easier now. There's so much more momentum on its side, but it took time to get it there. So that's how life is. The same way as if you're just pushing a car. And so next time you decide to jump into doing something new, something that you haven't done before, something that's brand new to you, realize it's like pushing that car. It's going to take time to get that thing moving. But once you get that moving, the important thing is to not stop. Because a lot of times what will happen as well is we do get the momentum on our side and then we self-sabotage and we stop. And then what happens? The car is eventually going to slow down. And when it slows down, it's going to go to stop. And then you got to do it over again. And then it's you got to do it over again. And you got to do it over again. Once you feel that momentum, you have to keep going.
And another example I always give is like, if we're at the top of a hill and I have a 15 pound bowling ball and I let it down and you stop it five feet after it's after it starts, it's very easy to stop five feet after it starts because it hasn't gotten all the momentum. But if you're at the bottom of that hill and you try to stop it with your hands, you're going to break a hand because it's got so much momentum on its side. And that's what we're trying to get into our life. And so if, if you look at the things that I hear a lot of people complaining about in life, like working out or fitness or losing weight. Maybe you haven't been on a fitness journey for a long time. Maybe you've never been on a fitness journey and you're now just waking up to, uh, yeah, I don't like the way my body looks. I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the soreness that I have. I don't like, you know, the lack of energy. You're going to have to harness some momentum in the first few weeks. You're going to have to drag your big old butt to the gym and you're not going to want to be there and it's not going to be fun and it's going to be like trying to push a car that's starting from zero it's going to be hard you're going to have to drag yourself like getting the car moving but it'll take a lot of will and showing up and will and showing up and just going i'm not going to give up i'm not going to give up but then what's really interesting is after about a month or so going from nothing to something the first month is the hardest after a month it starts to feel more normal and it starts to feel more normal and it's not as hard to get yourself to the gym. It's not as hard to eat the healthier stuff because your taste buds have now changed. You don't need all the sugary stuff. You don't need all the salty stuff. Healthier stuff starts to taste better than it did a month ago. And you start to have a little bit of momentum on your side. It starts to feel a little bit more natural. Now, at that point, you now have momentum on your side. Things are moving in the right direction. The worst thing that you can do is self-sabotage and stop because that car eventually is gonna come to a stop. And then you're going to have to go through the exact same process again. So you have to become very aware to number one. And when you're in the very beginning of stages of anything is reminding yourself that you're trying to get the momentum on your side. You're trying to get the car moving. And once it gets moving, you have to remind yourself not to let your foot off the gas, to continue to keep going, to continue to keep pushing to continue to push harder so that the momentum becomes easier and easier for you. And then what happens is after a while, those of you guys that have, have a, a very consistent routine of working out, six months, a year, two years, three years, it becomes unnatural to not go to the gym. Like going to the gym, your body actually starts to crave the working out. Your body actually starts to crave the healthier food because it fuels yourself better. Your body actually starts to crave the things that you want. But in the beginning, you don't crave it. But when your body starts to crave it, that is the momentum on your side moving you in the right direction. And that's what we're all trying to get to. If you have gotten to the point where you work out multiple times a day, you eat healthy, it becomes so much easier and it actually feels unnatural not to eat healthy. It feels unnatural not to work out, but it's not natural to feel that way. It's just, you've been able to get momentum on your side. I remember when I was really, really into working out, I'm not this crazy anymore. But about seven years ago, I remember I was like, I'm going to work out four times a week, no matter what. And I started doing, I started falling in love with it. Love with it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go up one more day. I'm going to do five days a week because I love it so much. And body started getting used to these endorphins and getting used to the feeling. I was like, you know what? I could probably do six days a week. And I got to six days a week. And I was like, I'm going to do six days a week and one rest day. And then my six days a week turn into six days a week. And I went, well, what if I just do like an active rest day and I still go to the gym, but I just don't lift as heavy. And so four days a week went to five, went to six, went to seven, simply because it just felt more natural to go. And I didn't like the way that I felt when I wasn't at the gym because I just had so much momentum on my side. And the only thing that took the momentum away is I tore, you know, <laughs> old injuries in my life, catching up from basketball and football and baseball when I was younger. I ended up having pain in my, my hips and shoulders and found out that there were some old sports injuries that kind of, as I got older, they kind of crept up a little bit. But that was the, uh, the slowing down of my momentum for me. And then after I was able to heal those injuries, it took a lot to get me back into the gym and have it start to feel natural again. This can also be stuff like waking up early. You know, for some of you guys that are out there, you're like, I wanna wake up early. I wanna have a morning routine. But waking up is hard at first. Like if you're like, you know what? I'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m. Waking up at 5 a.m. the first morning is like, what? It's so dark outside, it's cold. I feel like I just want to chug coffee right now or go back to bed. And it's just like the first time you do it is just like pushing that car. You're like, this isn't that fun. I don't like this. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like, now I'm really tired at the end of the day. And you know, middle of the day, I'm really tired. And your body's starting to get adjusted to it. It takes time to develop that morning waking up early routine that you want. And then you do it a little bit more and you fight through it and you fight through it and you fight through it. And, you, and then you're like, your body starts to adjust itself and your body starts to go, yeah, we're going to go to bed earlier. 
and your body starts to shut off. Instead of shutting off at 11 o'clock, now it's shutting off at 10. Now it's shutting off at nine. Your body will start to catch up and now you have that momentum on your side. Now you have the momentum to keep you going. And then what happens? If you've been doing a morning routine for long enough, you start to wake up before your alarm goes off because it just becomes so much easier. Starting a business is the exact same way. When you're in the beginning stages of a business, it's hard. It's figuring stuff out. It's pushing. It's There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work and you're finding out what doesn't work. And it feels like maybe I'm on the wrong path. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. Maybe I'm supposed to do something different. Maybe I'm in the wrong market. Maybe I'm not passionate about this. And you start thinking of all the reasons why this isn't the right thing. But what happens is, and the most important thing for all of these things, the most important things for all of these things is to have the destination in mind. Like a successful business, for instance, you know, get very clear on what that means for you. Is it you want to make $40,000 a year, $100,000 a year? Do you want to make a million dollars a year? Like what does, what does that destination look like that you're working towards? And you've got to keep that in your mind. If waking up early is what you want, what does that destination look like? My destination looks like waking up at five o'clock in the morning, every single morning, spending an hour to myself. That could be working out, working out, um, uh, journaling, it could be reading, it could be whatever it is that you want to do, meditating, all of that. And you, you develop it and you look at what the destination that you want is. Same thing where if you're trying to work to get the body that you want, what's important is that you have the destination in mind. And as you're doing it, there's gonna, the, the route that you thought you were going to go to get to that destination is going to change over and over and over and over again. You're going to be like, oh, dead end, oh, dead end, oh, dead end, oh, dead end. But it doesn't matter that you hit dead ends because you're now realizing what you, the, the, the place that you don't want to go and the place that you don't want to be. And you start to realize what doesn't work. And through finding out what doesn't work, you start to figure out what works. So starting a new business is the exact same way. It's like, all right, I'm going to start doing Facebook ads to sell my product. Well, you're going to find a lot of Facebook ads that do not work for you. And it's going to feel like wasted money. But through feeling like you're wasting money, you're also figuring out what doesn't work, which means you'll never do it again because it doesn't work. Why would you keep doing the same thing that doesn't work? And you start to take other paths and other routes. And eventually you find something that clicks. And when it clicks, that's the thing that brings in the money for you. And so it's about realizing exactly what it is that you want because everything, every single thing takes time and there's always a bit of a struggle in the beginning, the same way that it's a struggle to push the car. Nothing new is easy at the beginning that I've ever seen. Whether it's waking up early, whether it's working out, whether it's building a business, it's not really that easy, but it becomes so much easier as you do it over and over and over again. But the important thing is to look at the destination, have the destination in mind and say, I don't care what it takes, I'm going to get there eventually. No matter how many dead ends I find, I'm going to get there eventually. And you start to find out what works. And that finding out of what works is a little bit of the wheel starting to finally move. Because when you're first pushing, the car ain't moving, but then it starts to move a little bit. And you're like, oh man, I'm starting to see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. It starts to move a little bit. So if you're sitting there and you're listening to me and your life has been stagnant for a while, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some intention. And it's going to take a whole hell of a lot of work to get you out of stagnation into starting to get momentum on your side. But the super, super important thing is to make sure that you realize when you get that momentum on your side, how can you not stop? How can you just keep going? Because once you have action, you've heard me say it over and over again, action creates more action. Inaction creates more inaction. So how can you start to get that moving? And, and be very aware of what I like to call the I deserve it. The I deserve it's when you start, it's, it's when you get the momentum on your side and then you get a case of the I deserve it's and then you self-sabotage. And so a good example of like losing weight, for instance, right? You might be like, you know what? I'm on a weight loss journey. I want to lose 30 pounds. And you lose your first five, 10 pounds. Let's say you lose 10 pounds, right? And you're like, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're eating healthy. You're showing up to the gym. You're doing what needs to be done. Then what happens after those 10 pounds on the journey to 30, you get a case of the I deserve it. And you stop doing the things that were bringing you success. Have you ever done this before? You stop doing those things. So you're like, I've lost 10 pounds. You know what? I deserve to have some ice cream tonight. I've been working hard. I deserve it. Oh, I deserve to have a glass of extra glass of wine tonight. I deserve to, I was supposed to have a pizza, but I've been working, I've lost 10 pounds. I deserve 
to have some pizza instead of that salad that I was planning. And you get, I deserve it, I deserve it, I deserve it, I deserve it. And I deserve it is one of the most common forms of self-sabotage. And you do too many damn I deserve it's, you realize all those 10 pounds that you worked so hard to get off, they've all come back and you have stopped the momentum. You have self-sabotage. You're like, you know what? I was supposed to work out today, but I'll, uh, you know, I'll go tomorrow. I'll go tomorrow. No big deal. You know, I've been working hard. I've, been, I've lost 10 pounds. I deserve to take a day off because I've been working hard. I'm a little bit sore, right? And you get a case of the I deserve it. And it's just many, 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 many self-sabotages. And then they all add up and you're like, six months later, I'm back to the same weight that I was before. And that's the case of the I deserve it's that people will get. People get it with weight loss. They get it with like, a, they have a great week of sales. And then like, you know what? I had such a good sales week last week. I made, I made more than I've ever made in that last week. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of take it easy this week because I deserve it. I worked so damn hard last week. So you've got to be very self-aware of the I deserve it's and how that leads to self-sabotage because that is the, the power of momentum being slowed down by your self-sabotage. And so you've got to be very aware of that. So the thing that I always like to think about, and I, I bring this up pretty often with a lot of people I like coach is, you know, think back to something that you really wanted to do years ago, but you gave up on like working out or starting that business or, you know, waking up early, whatever those things might be. What is something that you gave that you really wanted to do, but you gave up on years ago? Think about that and bring that close to your mind. What would your life look like if you just decided back then to never give up? What would your life look like today? What would your mind look like today? What would your body look like today if you never gave up on that thing that you gave up on 10 years ago? Your life would be vastly different, but the problem is you gave up on it. Now, let me take you to present moment. What if this thing that you wanna do, you just decided that you're never gonna give up on it? You're not gonna get a case of the I deserve it, and you're not going to stop until you're at the destination that you want. That is the mindset that you have to have to harness the power of momentum. And when you do that, you'll look back and you'll realize your life is in a completely different place years from now. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you were already the person that could create the success that you want, you would have already had that success. So what we're getting down to is that it's you that needs to change.